question. If any group, if any group, if any group is giving their own submission, we all have to listen. If any group is giving their own submission, we all have to listen. If you, are, if any of your group is talking or causing uh, any distraction, you, you, you won't know. The shape will just record your group down. Zero. That's minus two. So, if you see anybody among your group that is not listening to the presentation of, of the other group, you better caution him or her. Or else, your group might already get negative ten before even you present. You may have negative figure before you even present anything. So, first group, please. Now listen to first group, please. Brothers and sisters, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. My name is Salamu My name is Ridwan. Bismillah. Our question was the effect of intoxication and illicit sexual relationships. All intoxications in Islam are haram. The evidence for this is Surah 5, verse 90. And also, our deen comes to protect five things. And keeping the brain sound is one of these five things. Illicit sexual relationship is also haram and one of the major sins in our deen that needs repentance. When Allah talks about illicit sexual relationships, Allah doesn't say, don't do zina. He says, don't come close to zina. The evidence for this is in Surah 17, verse 32. Therefore, as you can see, Islam not only protects ourselves from harm, but also other Muslims and humanity. So keep calm and stay away from haram. Number two, please. Spot on, Marshall. Number two. Please, come, come, come. My name is Malik. Salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. Let me listen. Our question was teenagers in, in non Islamic society responsibilities towards parents and elders. In a non Islamic society where homes and elderly centers are required for elderly people, Islam clearly shows the importance of looking after our elderly and parents in the following eyes and ideas. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وخضع ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا. The first ayah means and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him and that you be dutiful to your parents. If one of them or both of them has seen an old age in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor. Second ayah, and lower to them the wind of submission and humility through mercy. And say, My Lord, bestow on them your mercy, as they did bring me up when I was young. The final ayah, in Surah Al-Luqman, وَإِنْ جَاءَكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ 
تشرك بي ما ليس لك به علم ما ليس لك به علم فلا تطعهما وصاحبهما في الدنيا معروفا واتبع سبيل من أناب إلي ثم إلي مرجعكم فأنبئكم بما كنتم تعملون The translation for this ayah But if they both strive with you to make you join in worship with me others that of which you have no knowledge then obey them not but behave with them in the world of but behave with them in the world kindly and follow the path of who of him who turns to me in repentance and in obedience then to me will be your return and I shall tell you what you used to do <coughs> and please guys before you carry on the rest they have to uh, at least take points of uh, what the, the other brothers are saying and also at least pay attention because that that is very important yeah we need to all benefit from this it's not just you are busy with something else while other brothers are telling you their points barakallahu fikum indeed the prophet May he perish, the one that doesn't enter Dhamma, while his parents reach old age. In another hadith, Islam shows that the mother has more right than the father, because the man... Sorry, sorry, I'm going to stop you. Your name. Let us say your name. Your name first, please. They are failed. <laughs> say your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, say your name. I'm going to start again, please. Mustafa. Mustafa what? You just Mustafa. Mr. Faroki, Hadith, the Prophet said, May he perish, the one that doesn't enter paradise while his parents reach old age. In another Hadith, Islam shows that the mother has more right over the father because a man came to the Prophet and said, Prophet and said, Your has right over me. The, the Prophet said, Prophet said the man, the, your mother, the man repeated his question and the Prophet said your mother again. The man asked again, who next? The Prophet said your mother again. The man asked, asked again, the Prophet said your father. This shows your mother's three times the right over you than your father. In conclusion, these ayahs and the Quran take um, our duties to our parents and how we should treat them. But it clearly states that if it goes to disobedience of Allah, we do not do what they say. All Muslims are to treat the elderly and their parents well. It is one of our gateways to Jannah. MashaAllah, the brother should be in BBC News, I think. Who's reading? Takbir! 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 Alhamdulillah, we are me. That's group number two. Can I have your submission, please? Me, you mentioned your name. You mentioned your name. I didn't see you. I'll talk to you. Number three. Come on, start talking. Say Allah Akbar, people start talking. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as alaikum wa Our question was can you be a part of the society and be a good Muslim? And for yes, yes you can. Because we can be a part of the society and be a good Muslim as we have been taught in this program to love our neighbor. However, it would be very difficult as there are different influences out there that can take us astray. For example, the public and the media are not helping us Muslims as the newspapers portray Muslims as terrorists and bad people. In our society, it is very difficult to be a Muslim 
But alhamdulillah, we are all making an effort to be a part of the society in a positive way. Instead of what the media and public think about us, which is in a negative way. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is um, Tommy Soyemi. Um, yes, we can be a part of society and still be a good Muslim. Depends on the state of your iman understanding, not, your, um, not legibility of the moral etiquette of Islam's and beliefs and the ability of the Muslims to be able um, to portray the behavioral my influence, attitude and etiquette. So a Muslim that might influence the larger part of society about Islamic religion as a form of dawah. Like what happened in Malaysia when the Sahabas went um, went there on trade and because of their attitude and behavior they reverted the um, the most of Malaysians into Islam. Iman, the state of Iman of Muslims living in um, a non-Muslim society must be very highly understanding and knowledgeable of the rules and ethics of Islam. Muslims really be working on their iman way by Islamic gathering, lectures, workshops, etc. Behavior. The behaviors of Muslims in a non-Muslim society is the most important input um, and best way of da'wah and a uh, potent way of acquiring and obtaining verts to Islam as was the case with the Sahabas that went to Malaysia. Allah Akbar! Give it to me, give it to me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. My name is Aziz. Aziz what? Aziz what? Aziz Adai. MashaAllah. Dawah is a primary objective and reason that allow Muslims to live in a non-Muslim society like UK. Muslims must live the life of Dawah to the non-Muslim society. Muslims must be wary of the feelings and interactions with the non-Muslims so as to portray the good morals, ethics, etiquette and ways of a good Muslim to be to the society in general. Everyone, even non-Muslims, are our neighbours. We must treat them the same as we treat our Muslims. If you notice, we say revert and not convert because we believe we, because we believe everyone is a Muslim. So in society, behave normally, normally and be respectful to everyone. That is the submission of the group number three. And I have your submission, please. And the question, please. Oi, Yalla. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam. My name is Mikhail, a Jamaican, and a Muslim Jadidan Sanatain. Translation is Mikhail from Jamaica, um, a new Muslim for uh, since two years now. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Our question is pair group. Um, choosing your friend, who should you go out with? Who should you go out with? As in choosing your right, your friends, the right friends. Inshallah. Bismillah, my name. Alaikum. My name is Sultan. Sultan what? Sultan Saka. Okay. Yeah. 
or the believer, the solid foundation must always be Islam. The irrefutable truth that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad wasallam, is his messenger. Therefore, as a believer, you must surround yourself with those who share the same beliefs and values. It is important to choose your friends carefully. Prophet Muhammad wasallam, warned the believers about this too. He said that a person would be influenced by his friends. And he warned that everyone should look carefully at those they consider to be their friends. People you surround yourself with will have a huge influence on you. Therefore, surround yourself with those who take the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as their example. Allah says in the Quran, and remember, the day when the wrongdoers will bite at his hand, he will say, oh, would I have taken a path with the messenger, sir? It is acceptable to have non-Muslim friends, but we should try our best to bring them to Islam. This is called Dawah, which means, which means to give the call. The Hadith referring to this says, the Prophet Muhammad said, in whose hand Muhammad's soul is there, is none amongst the Jews and Christians of present, who hears about me and then dies without believing in the messenger, with which I have been sent. But he will from the dwellers of hellfire. <coughs> Takbir. Allah 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 no, no, why are they talking? They should know. Yeah. No, once at a time. When, when, when you're talking, you should say your name. When he's talking, you should say his name. So they know that. Hassan. Hassan. Discussing about their group. Because this is my group now. Who should you pick as your friend? We do it, Who should we go out with as a Muslim? Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to good friend, inshallah. Amen. Group number five now, number five. Are we ready? Yes. 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 In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful. All praise and adoration is due to Allah, the Lord of the world, the beneficent and merciful. Master of the day of judgment. I bear witness that there is no other God to worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the message of Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ibrahim Lani. Me and my crew members are going to be discussing purification in Islam. There are two major kinds of purification in Islam. The spiritual purification and the physical purification. We are going to stick to the physical purification, inshallah. My name is Kudus. There is a Hadith. My name is Kudus of the Sugar. There is a Hadith in Muslim that says from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, purification is half of the deed. These are some of the acts of cleanliness during the day. Number one, when you wake up. Sorry, you, you did salam. salam. My name is Farid Karate. Salam alaikum, brothers and sisters. Number one, these are some of the acts of cleanliness during the day. Number one, when you wake up. The Prophet used to clean his mouth with a miswak. Miswak. The Prophet advised us to wash our hands three times before we touch anything. And to wash nos and to wash our nostrils because the devil goes there when you sleep. Number two. In the toilet we must ensure to 
We use our left hand to clean ourselves and be sure to avoid dropping any urine on our clothes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day when he was going past the graveyard, he, took, he stopped his swab and told them that the, man, uh, the inmate of the grave, the inmate of the graveyard is being punished at the moment because he, he, because of before what he was doing, uh, he failed to do something. He thought it was just a little. What the inmate was doing do was that he didn't clean himself properly after using the toilet, and because of this, he's being punished in the graveyard. Number three, before eating. It is good to wash our hands before we eat. Number four, major impurity. We must take a bath when we become, when we become majorly impure. Number five, tayamun. This, this is to use clean for you when water is not available. My name is Taj Muhammad Ahmad. Um, uh, one of the major impurity in Islam for women is that menses. Um, this is, has a uh, history background that well, before Islam, even now, and some of the Arabs, they used to mistreat and oppress their women when they went through their menses. And Islam teaches us that menses is a natural part of women. So women will go through menses every month of whenever that is due. So, um, the Jewish and the, uh, the Arabs at the time, they used to, when a woman went through menses, they used to lock them in a room, and don't eat uh, their cooks and um, whatever they touch, they, they think that uh, has become impure. And that is happening today in uh, within the Jewish tribes and community. Well, regarding, regarding of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says that, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويسألونك عن المحيض قل هو أذى فاعتزوا للنساء في المحيض ولا تقلهن حتى يذهن فإذا تتحرن حتى يذهن فإذا, فإذا تتحرن فأتهن من حيث أمركم الله إن الله يحب التوابين ويحب المتطهرين نساءكم حرث لكم فأطوا حرثكم أن شئتم وقدموا لأنفسكم وطقوا الله وعلموا أنكم ملاقوه وشر المؤمنين uh, The meaning of the translation of the first ayah is They ask you, Prophet ﷺ, concerning illustration Tell them, say, that is an adha A harmful thing for a husband to have a sexual intercourse with his wife while she is having her menses. Therefore, therefore, keep away from women during menses and go not to them till they are purified from menses and have taken a bath. And when they have purified themselves, then go into them as Allah has ordained for you. Go into them in a manner as long as it is in their vagina. Truly, I'll love those who turn to him in repentance and love those who purify themselves by taking bath and cleaning and washing through the private parts but to provide private private parts bodies for their uh, to be clean for their prayers. Your wives are a uh, tell for you, so go to your tell when or how you will and send good deeds. Or ask Allah to bestow upon you pious offspring for your for your own self beforehand, and fear Allah and know that you are to meet Him in the in the air of the, and gave glad tidings to the believers. O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this proves that that one Quran came and it just um, um, rectified their belief. It made it clear for women that. We, uh, we can go to them, we can enjoy their company, we can enjoy their company with us, but we can't have intercourse with them. That is uh, very clear because Rasulullah used to go to his wife and in many narrations, and one of them says that when she was uh, having her menses, Rasulullah recited Quran while leaning on her 
love, and eating, sitting, talking with all his wives. <coughs> yeah. And... Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah says in the Surah to talk about verse 108 that never stand up in it. There is a mosque whose foundation was laid from the first day of piety. It is more worthy for, of you standing up for prayer in it. In it are men who love to be purified, and Allah loves those who keep themselves pure. In fact, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well says that the salat is the key to paradise, and the key to salat is purification. That means purification has a link to uh, Ali Jannah. May Allah inshallah make us an image of Ali Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. He saw he saw um, the daughter of Allah missing from Allah's messenger wearing a red silk garment. Imitating. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Fadil Saka. Imitating each other, men and women. Allah cursed a woman who wears a man's clothes and a man who wears woman's clothes. Abu Dawood, narrated by Abu Hurairah. 
السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters in Islam um, We've got a point on what Your name grow a bed in Islam. Um, name, name. Name, name Islam yeah. Is um, my name is Abdurrahim Evans, inshallah. Um, so we've got a point, inshallah, um, why men should grow a bed, inshallah. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah, it was reading. <laughs> By Ibn Amr, anhu, um, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, um, trim, trim the stash and leave the bed, inshallah. Um, and there is. Uh, yeah! <laughs> 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 the companions, Allah wa anhum, um, did not want to look at a man that didn't have a bed as well, inshallah. Um, and there is. The next part, clothing, no tattoos, and eyebrow plucking, and f filing teeth, no high heels, and the hat, um, men, they have to wear a hat, but it's not obligatory, no silk clothing, wear clothing, wear clothing that covers the aura, if, you, if your aura, aura shows in Salat, your Salat is invalid, if you see someone Someone's aura in the light, it invalidates your salad. Um, men, they have to grow beards. It's okay, it's okay. For their hair, they have to have one leopard. Take me! Except at home, so I permitted for her husband. She can beautify herself at home for her husband, but she cannot beautify herself and go outside. That's what the hadith means. So we need to understand. Barakallahu alaykum for participating. Now is... No one knows here. About five minutes for the last one. Take me! Allahu Akbar! 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 Allahu Akbar!